Hi all, Rob here. So I've had a couple people ask how I go about scripting the webcomic Lord of Goblins on Webtoon. Many people are unsure exactly about how one would format a Webtoon script, so I thought I'd make a video basically explaining my process and how I approach it. Now, the first thing you need to understand about scripting Webtoons is that, well, there is no one universal format for scripting a comic. Basically, somewhere on the line, many different formats evolved, and unlike movies, which have a very standard format, comic books do not. Um, on your screen here, you can see three different comics, all written by professional, and I mean Marvel or DC or alternative, uh, level comic writers. Each of these is by a professional. And you can see they're using a completely different style. Uh, the first one you can see is describes things as pages and pictures and then has and for whatever reason puts all the dialogue in capital letters which is interesting the second one and the one in the middle um is actually this is the format you would see used for believe it or not documentary filmmaking or news reports or things like that this is actually the format they use for it where they have description and then they have what's being said while what we see on the screen. And this author has chosen to use that style for their uh, comic book. On the other hand, we've got, way on the right there, we've got this one with, uh, which again, pages, and okay, the numbers are presumably our panel numbers. And it describes what's in the panel, and that's fine. But we've got these like EXT, city, late, day, EXT, street, same. Those are movie notations. If you look, look at the screenplay, you'll see those are scene mark notations to basically tell us whether internal or external, that's sort for external, of course, that's where the scene takes place, inside or outside, where does it take place, and when does it take place. So you can see here that people are using many different formats. And when I first set about working on Lord of Goblins, I had to think about, well, what format am I going to use? And the answer is basically none of these. I One that's similar to all of them, I took elements from all of them, but I used none of them. Um, first and foremost, I should say that I use a um, program called Scrivener. And that program is a book, book writing, or it's actually can be used for many different things, including plays or novels or comic books. It comes with a comic book format built in that would produce a comic that looks something, I guess, kind of like the, the one on the right. Uh, if you started adding external, internal, and all that, you would get something sim somewhat similar to the one on the right. And I thought that was the best way to go. But I don't use the internal, external things, as you're going to see. Um, the other challenge that I ran into is that a traditional comic book is meant for a, pa a page like this one, right? And so we've got, starts up here on the top left, works out, and goes through here. You can see it very clearly. This is a standard comic book page, all right? But the thing is, webtoons are not done on the comic page. A webtoon looks like this. Um, this is Ghost King, one that I do not work on, but which seems like a pretty good uh, webtoon. And I thought it was a good visual description of what's going on with a webtoon. So webtoons are infinite, as in, I'm not kidding, they're literally infinite scroll. The idea is they're designed for mobile reading, where the reader is basically just constantly scrolling up. And that makes sense because they're meant for mobile devices and that's what the Koreans pioneered them for. Totally makes sense. The problem you run into with webtoons though and in their infinite scroll approach is that, you see where it says here, Move Room Patrol Squad, Okay, and we got an image, we got the Moon Patrol Squad was created to prevent, investigate, and quash crime for the sake of protecting the lives or property of the citizens of Murim. Okay, and then we got more information here, another picture, and more information, etc. Well, here's the thing, right? This is not panel-based. You can get objects like this Moon Patrol Squad thing that are technically not part of that panel. That image and that piece of information are separate from each other. So organizing things based on panels doesn't really work well for webcomics. 
or webtoons specifically. Web comics can come in many forms, but with the webtoon style. So what I ended up doing is is developing a system where I itemize things by item, not by image. Because using pick would be wrong because sometimes I'm talking about text or sound effects or other things. Using panel would be wouldn't work either. So in the end I ended up going with item. So in the format that I use, this Right here, Moon Patrol Squad would be item number one. Image, item number two. This would be item number three, item number four, item number five, item number six. Then we get to this image here. Because this is presumably this character speaking, this is part of the panel. So this whole thing would be item number seven. Presumably that's part of it as well. Item number eight. And then we got item number nine. Now again, this dialogue is part of this panel, even though this artist, like many artists, including the one I work with, Land from Light Comic Studio, is uh, letting it go outside. So this would still be considered part of this panel. All right. And so, as you can see, I use the item approach because sometimes things are part of the panel, sometimes they're not, and you have to take that into account. The other thing that uh, you should note is there's an invisible language happening with webtoons. And I'll show you what I mean. When you see a white background like this, that means that what you're looking at is something that's happening in the present, in the present moment. Why is that important? Watch this. This character is about to have a flashback. Do you see what happened there? It switched from white to black. Whenever the background is black, that means you are in a flashback. You are in thought space, you're in dream space, you're away from the current present time. That's the secret language or one of the pieces of secret language that webtoons have kind of developed. And readers pick on that. And readers pick up on that pretty intuitively. All right, so that's something that you'll see all the time. Um, let's see, and as you can see here, we finish the flashback, bang, it goes back into modern day. And we're back to this panel again. It's weird how this character keeps switching styles, but whatever, it depends on his mood, right? Webtoons can sometimes be very cartoony, sometimes they can be very serious and realistic. It depends on the author's style and how they want to do things. So with this in mind, I developed the webcomic format that I use, which is this one, and it looks like this. Okay, so, the web, so this is the uh, episode script for Lord of Goblins episode 17. You can see here at the very top, I put the title right there. Then I have a uh, then I have my introductory notes. Now this is important. Actually, you might think introductory notes. What do they matter? Well, this is generally where I put information that tells the reader, the artist, obviously in this case, or artists, what this particular episode is about. I often give a quick synopsis of the artist. I might mention the different sections or whatever whatever important things I think it is for them to know. The synopsis is also important because once you have 20, 30, 40, 100 episodes, you sometimes need to be able to go back through them very quickly and find a particular episode and to reference something that happened earlier. And having this introductory summary makes a huge difference. It lets me quickly go through and just glance at without having to read a whole script to figure out which script I'm looking at. Sure, when you've got one or two scripts, it doesn't really matter that much. But when you've got 20, 30, 40, 100, it makes a huge difference. So save your future self a lot of trouble and make sure that you have a little synopsis at the beginning. Again, just one or two sentences. All right, I follow this up with setting notes. Now the setting is usually, again, where the majority of action takes place. If there's just one location in this episode, or one major location, I will often put all the setting details the artist needs to know here. If there are multiple scenes set in multiple settings, then I will give a rough idea of what's happening in this one. And then later on, when I actually introduce that scene, I will give more details about what's around the characters and what the setting looks like. Also, don't be afraid to put hyperlinks here or any other part of the documents. One of the nice things about using web documents, not paper documents, you can include hyperlinks to inspire people. I follow that with characters. Just a, This is just a list of characters, starting with uh, first appearing to last appearing. In this case, Gurm is the first character we see, and Gorza is the last character introduced in the story. So therefore, we have this list. 
All right. You might notice that, that these are some generic characters, so that's why they don't have specific details or names. Similarly, uh, we have the character design notes. The character design notes are where I would put anything the artist needs to know about how the character looks in this episode. Now, I'm kind of lucky that way. I'm scripting Lord of Goblins, which is at the moment anyway. It won't be in the future. But in the moment is about a bunch of uh, poor, destitute goblins living in a mine where they're slaves. In other words, they only have one set of clothes. So I don't usually have to worry about that. They have one set of clothes for... And if there's any changes to them or whatever, I put it here. You also notice that I have these two lazy recruits, one with long hair, thin face, the other has a shortcut buzz hair. Those characters are only going to appear in this script, so I'm basically giving a rough idea for the artist to work with, and they can make them look like whoever they want. Same with the bogey recruits here. These are just a bunch of notes that are basically to make sure they look roughly like this. So they're dressed in rags, they're skinny, and there are no female bogeys among the recruits because that's the way the bogeys roll. All right, the bogeys in this case, if you're not familiar with the comic, are a type of goblin. They're a goblin subspecies. Following that, we have script begins. I always put that there, and there's one uh, counter note, script ends, just to show where the script begins and ends for general reference. We have background is white. Remember, I just told you that. So obviously the artist knows, okay, this takes place in the present. And if it changes at some point, I'll have a note, background changes to black or background changes back to white, etc. for obvious reasons. And as I mentioned before, we've got the items. That's how I organize things. Now, most of the time, these items are actually a panel, but not always. So that's why I list them as items and a very brief description of what they see in that uh, item. Okay, what would that what that panel would look like? Um, character names are in the centered, and they're in capital letters. Again, if they have a long name, use just a short reference for them. And then slightly offset is their dialogue, not in caps. All right, you can see here multiple characters. Um, here's an interesting point. You see Germ, an old friend. We're going to put to good use. Do you have those samples I asked for? There's a space in between. That indicates to the artist, these are separate word balloons or word bubbles, whichever term you prefer to use. I blue, prefer balloons because balloons look nice, so word balloons. Okay, so these are two separate word balloons. And the artist knows that by the space that's in between. Pro tip, do not put more than 25 words in a single balloon. The, otherwise, it'll crowd out the art, it'll, it won't look good. So generally speaking, try to keep your individual balloons under 25 words whenever possible and preferably less because this is a webtoon and webtoons are more visually driven and the text is there to work with the visuals and you don't want like long blocks of text or that will not go well it will probably not be successful the uh, the reader will look at it and go uh too much text brain not work not interested you'll notice again here i have a link hyperlink because i can do that um Pro tip, whenever possible, give your artist reference material. Use hyperlinks. They're really handy. Two places to look for uh, visual references for links. Of course, Google Images is an obvious one. Another great place, Pinterest. You'd be amazed what you can find on Pinterest. It's like this giant artistic thing. And the nice thing about Pinterest is if you pick an image when you click on it, it will show you a whole bunch of images that are similar to that image or it thinks you might like as well as that image, which sometimes is even better than the one you clicked on. So Pinterest, great place, especially if you need fashion as well, because that's one of the things Pinterest excels at. So don't be afraid to use Pinterest links or Google Doc links or image links. Just make sure the link goes directly to that image and not to a whole bunch of other crap. So don't do double check your links. All right, interesting note. Here's item 13, which is no panel. There's only sound effects. This is sound effects between panels. So therefore, I just listed as no panel. I could actually make other notes like uh, large sound effect or something like that, big letters, whatever I want, however I want to put it. Okay, but this is sound effects between panels, and this is why item does not equal panel. They they don't match each other. Uh, one more thing I want to note: you can also use parentheses. So germ, for example, thinking. So this will be a thought bubble or however the artist chooses to do it. Even a bogey child can use a sling to hunt food. This is a game changer. Scene transition of a few black lines. I prefer the few black lines transitions. You can have the transitions flow however you prefer, whatever your style is. Make sense? All right, then. 
So what does this actually look like in practice? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to move that over there. I will bring up this particular webtoon and we'll take a look. So obviously it starts with the script. The background is white. Background is white. Check. Okay. We see a chest up shot of Gurm standing there looking questioningly at the camera while the head of the giant cave centipede for episode two to four with its dripping jaws looms over him like it's going to bite him. And the artist did a home run on this one. That looks fantastic. There's Gurm there. There's the cave centipede with its dripping jaws. Oh my God, Gurm's about to get eaten. What's going to happen? It's a great visual hook right there for the reader. What happens? Well, item two, Volker and two scared bogey recruits reacting in fear and horror seeing the creature threaten Gurm. Yep, they're scared. Item three, upper body side shot of Gurm staying in front of the monster. We can only see his, its head and it looks like it's about to strike Gurm. Gurm is gesturing back to it with his thumb. What? This thing? Now you'll notice the artist did not go for a side shot like I originally intended, but did something just as good. So I'm okay with that. I think that worked out nicely. Still, it's a great shot. And again, you, remember, you're writing what is basically a rough draft, and then the artist uses their skill and their knowledge to turn it into something exceptional, something even better. That's the whole idea. And then, of course, we have the Volker and the Wide-Eyed Recruits nodding vigorously. Yes, yes. Ah. And... It's dead. Don't worry about it. Now we pull back fully to see that, yeah, it's dead. We're just looking at the head of the darn thing on a cart. Which is, of course, item number five. Um, one interesting note. It's dead. Don't worry about it. Where should we put it, sir? Appears here. But you know, there's another line here that isn't that the artist didn't include. They shifted it down to over here. So that now he's pointing. Uh, put it over there. And Volker approaches Gurm nervously. Sir, what is it? It's an old friend we're going to put to good use. And like I said, separate word bubbles. And so that ha that's how that works. And then now, okay, we've got these those samples. Not bad. Good weight and shape to them. Looks like an almond, which of course these are almond shaped with a little style. One interesting note, one of the things I love about Webtoons is their ability to, flexibil to have flexible panel sizes and styles. Because take a look at this, for example, where the artist did this you know, beautiful 3D panel, and then followed it up with this side shot showing action and it being released. And there's that thunk that I showed you earlier right here, panel, no sound effects, thunk. This is what the artist did with it. They decided to create text effects and really emphasize it in between. And then we get to the thing embed, the bullet embedded in the armor. What do you think, sir? And actually, the artist added an extra panel between here because that's what visually made sense. Remember, they're the masters of the visual realm. You're giving them an example of what to do. But in the end, your job is to inspire them and give them the story and the dialogue, and they do the rest. Because they're the artist, not you. Unless you are they're also the artist and you're ready for yourself, in which case you can do pretty much what you want. All right, so that's basically how I script a webtoon. Hopefully you found this interesting and educational. And if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments below or write to me. Um, you'll be able to find the link on YouTube or on my blog at robinpatterson.com. Also, I will make a template based on my script writing style available for you to use if you want. Now, as I said, I use Scrivener and I'm using the built-in script writing template, which I've modified a tiny bit in Scrivener myself. But... You could use any program you want, even Notepad, Word, whatever. And you could also script it in whatever style will work for you and your artist. Always remember that. So I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching. Bye.